Welcome to the next part of our training videos for commercial inspection. This one is heating. Obviously the heating refers to the H in HVAC. Um, briefly I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I am a, an industrial commercial electrician. I have started my apprenticeship in 1981. We'll just go through this today, um, give you a brief outline of what you'll need to know and some of the language that you would find on the reports and to make it easier for you to compile your report from the third party expert you might bring in. The definition of heat is the first one. Um, heat is caused by a, a reaction to molecules or atoms that when they agitate, they give off heat energy. The SI unit for heat is J, which is joule. Heat can also be measured in calories. Calories was uh, as defined as the amount of energy that it takes to heat one gram of water from 14.5 degrees Celsius to 15.5 degrees Celsius. This is a very accurate measurement for heat. Um, it was defined by the British Academy of Science in 1863, thereabouts. But the one you'll come across most commonly is the British Thermal Unit, BTU. On all the reports and everything they do these days, that's just the, the standard. It's just the amount of energy it takes to heat one pound of water by one degree Fahrenheit. So that's every, every heater you'll come across will have a BTU rating. The first thing we'll come across is an air handling unit. This is a large air handling unit. Um, as you can see on here, you have a heat exchanger. You have a fan blowing the heat through here. You have a, the air circulated through. You have a filter here. You have your control circuits up here. These are usually found on a roof or in the base, basement, um, by a mechanical room or the, uh, wherever they, they decide to put the main heating part of the building. So on a large one like this, this would heat a, a large area. There'll be a ducting going down through here and the air goes down and is vented out and it's vented back up. This one will draw the fans out that way and exempt the, <coughs> sorry, vent the gases out, the exhaust gases, whatever. You can see there's insulation in here. There's got all the electrical controls. You even have lights in this one so that uh, for maintenance, um, they can come in and they can check the belt tensions and make sure the fans are working, going the right way around. Uh, if, if you have your third party inspector there, fine, he'll know what to look for in that. But if you decide you want to take a panel off, the, about the only one you'll really need to take off is to see if the filter's clean or has it been changed. Because you don't know what the belt tensions are meant to be. You don't know what the settings are meant to be. You have an on off switch here. That would be about as much as you could test without having the, the expert there with you. You could write a report on what you see, any physical damage, anything like that. But that would be the limit of your report. The expert would give you a more in-depth report on that. Now, your definition of the, they'll talk to you about maybe a direct firing unit. Um, what a direct firing unit is, as you can see here, you'll have a heat burner here, the inlet hood here through a damper. There's a filter there your gas burner, and basically it just burns into the air. The air is sucked through the, across the burner, down through the supply fan, and then you have, you say, your roof curb there, and down into the ducting, or directly down through a, a vent into an area. That's defined as direct fire. Um, again, you know, uh, your expert will give you a report on the state of the burners. Um, it'll tell you what the medium is you're gonna be burning, whether it's gas or oil. And you, you just, you'll be able to pick up, and again, you'll look at a visual inspection to see if there's any damage to it, if the filter's cleaned, if the dampers are working. But your expert is the one that will tell you whether the burners are good, whether it's, uh, whether, what the BTU rating is, and whether it's actually working as efficient as it should do. These direct fire, firing ones should burn at around, these new ones are around 95% efficient. So the exhaust gases are just pushed out into the air. They burn that efficiently and uh, the exhaust gases are within safe limits because it will be distributed over a fairly large area. So no one person will be breathing in a lot of gas. Normally what happens with these things is the fan will start first. Then you'll get the flame coming. And this allows all the exhaust gases that are burnt to start with to be 
burnt away, distributed around, so there's no big blast of exhaust gas in coming through a vent. Here we have the indirect fire system. The difference is you'll have a heat exchanger. You'll still have the, the weather hood and the damper and a filter. And you'll have your heat source under here and it will pass through a heat exchanger. Again, through the fan, down through the roof. But these ones will have a flue because the exhaust gases are vented out and away. Um, again, uh, the, the inspection part of what you'll be looking at is to see, or the or re expert will be looking at, is to see if the heat exchanger is, is working well, if it's not damaged or blocked or anything, that the filter's in good condition. And that there's no, you know, that a bird hasn't got in there and decided to make a nest in front of the heat exchanger, thus re reducing its efficiency. And they, again, it's a simple system, the vent fan, the exhaust, uh, so excuse me, the heat will be vented down that way. Okay, the next thing we talk about is, is, is the water, it's warm air. I mean, most big commercial um, industrial properties use a warm air system. If you have an apartment block or an office block, there'll be a central system which pumps warm air throughout the building. And as you can see through this one, you have insulated pipes. So this is probably a hot water system that runs through there. You have an inspection panel here. Um, and there's possibly one on the other side. And you can see these removable parts here with filters. That's about as much as you'll be able to inspect. Even your expert won't be able to get much further than that. You'll just look at the ducting, make sure the joints are good. And there's no holes or anything in it. That the pipe is insulated and you have a pump system here. Your expert will tell you how, what the pump rating's at, if it's efficient, if it's got to work well. Um, as you can see, the way these pipe systems are set up, this, the heating is coming from somewhere else. It's from a, fern, uh, from a boiler, and it's then pumped through here, and then the heat is taken out of the water, and then it's pushed into the air, and then the air is circulated around. There'll be a return air, and all that, and it's a whole venting system. But this is a central heating system which is warm air, forced warm air. And that's the usual, as I say, in office buildings and uh, apartment blocks, um, even some hotels, although fewer of them are going that way now. The other thing you come across in all, pretty much a lot of these systems is the boilers. You have a boiler room. Um, as you can see, you, you have these pumps circulating the water and the, um, sorry, I beg your pardon, this, the gas coming in here, it's mixed with air. There's an ignition source which lights it up. There's a flue that comes out there. You have a water pipe system coming through here and all these valves are operating. And each one of these boilers will operate a different zone of the building. They will um, say these ones are gas. You can see there's a gas regulator there. A, a large, lot of inspectors will have uh, the uh, experts will take some of these panels off to get in to make sure there's no cracks in the boiler, that there's no leaks, visible leaks. You have another regulator here. Uh, this is probably for the ignition system. It's electrically controlled. You have electric wires coming down here and there's a control box there for the fan. The ignition process is basically you, know, you have a gas pushed in there, but it's mixed with air and there's an ignition system, an ignition system that will spark and cause that to light. You have a pressure gauge there. Um, this is a, it's quite a complex system. It's quite a large system. So this would be a, quite obviously a large building. It may be a factory, it may be anything that's, you know, a bit more than a, like a pizza store or something like that. So you'll need your expert with this one because, I mean, there's technical data on these plates here. Um, they'll write it down for you, the, you know, the BTUs and the ratings and what's that. And you can walk around with them and pick up information. Here we have an oil-fired boiler. It's basically the same principle as gas. It's pumped through under pressure, it's mixed with air, and it's ignited. Inside here, there are tubes where the water is circulated around, um, and it gets hot and then transfers the heat. It comes out through, here it looks like a holding tank, and you have a whole system of pipes and valves and controls. It's, it's a complex system, but it's a very efficient way of putting water around the building and generating heat. Um, as we saw on that warm air system, it could actually f just run the water through an air handling unit and the heat is transferred through to the air that way. Or it could be baseball radiator type heatings where they, they have hot water pumped around them. 
it could be any number of systems. You have a pump here. You have a complex series of pipes and valves here that regulate the flow of the oil and the water. Um, sometimes they'll be switched off in the middle of summer because you don't need them working and it's not, not going to heat the hot water system. It might be a separate uh, supplier for that. But yeah, your expert will tell you exactly what this is. Don't be frightened to ask him. Don't be frightened to ask him, what is the supply? Is it gas? Is it oil? Whatever. The next boiler we talk about is a solid fuel boiler. Um, it's not the best picture, but it does show you the insides of a boiler. As, you, as I said earlier, you see these pipes, they come through here. The, the water is piped through. Uh, there's a fire in there. Uh, with a solid fuel boiler, it could be wood, pellets, coal. Large, large uh, boilers and boiler systems will use a coal fire if they're going to go solid fuel. There's a pressure gauge on the top there because all boilers, you need to know what the pressure is inside there so it's not going to explode on you. With a, with a solid fuel stove, there'll be some way of cleaning out the fire pit. Um, it normally drops, it has a filter to drop it down into an ash can or something like that that will be taken away. Here you have your valves and your systems of regulation here on the side. As I say, the doors will open. Um, pretty much on all boilers, there's some accessible point in case these need cleaning out or replacing. I mean, they, they replace them by taking out a whole tube, put a new tube in. Um, this water is then fed through under pressure, so the tubes obviously have to be secured, so they'll be welded or, or riveted some way. I'm not sure what this, this is, just probably a work platform up here where somebody can come up and stand on there. There'll be a system uh, for most boilers of venting extra pressure. Uh, to say you have a pressure gauge here, if there's a buildup of pressure, um, you'll need some way of venting it. And it could be through these valves. I say it's not the clearest picture, but it does explain how a boiler works, why you have all the tubes, and how the water can get around the flame without putting the flame out. So, and it generates, it generates heat into steam. The water is pressurized, becomes steam. And we know that uh, at sea level, steam is created when a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius, 212 degrees Fahrenheit is reached. So then it's pushed through under pressure. So the higher the pressure, the less heat it takes to create steam. So, and then we have a combustion air system. Uh, here you see the, the valves. You have a blower, uh, a mounting plate, and this is where the, the gas valve, this one is a gas one, and it's exhausted out. Basically, this just explains that when the gas is pushed through, it comes through, it's mixed with air, it's ignited, and it's called combustion air. The, uh, you have to have air to create a fire. This is one of the three things you have to have to fire. You will have a gas regulator here. You have these manual shutoff valves, um, a manual air valve, which will allow you to, to adjust the airflow. All these things will be, when you come up, this is just a, actually a, a, a drawing, but when your inspector's looking at these, he'll, uh, he'll need to see if the burners are still in good order, whether they're working efficiently, um, make sure that the exhausts aren't blocked with anything, that, that there's not a buildup of um, carbon in the exhaust, so that they, they exhaust efficiently. You'll have valves which will tell you the flow of gas and the air mix, and say and the fan has to make sure that's working. Uh, I'm not quite sure why you'd want a, a, a valve to shut the fan supply off, but that's... That's a designer's, he knows what to do there. But again, your expert will tell you what it's for, why it's there. And it just says, you can see the flue gas path is inside the furnace, circulating around and goes out through the exhaust. It's, uh, just getting rid of the exhaust gases so you don't get carbon monoxide buildup. Um, as we all know that, how dangerous that can be. So yeah, these, that's basically how a combustion air system works. It's a fairly simple idea, but you do need to push the air in under pressure. And the gas is also under pressure. That comes under the supply pressure of the gas. Sometimes that's increased with a fan. But generally speaking, the supply pressure is good enough for that. And you have a combustion air chamber. Here you have like a solid fuel chamber. This one um, has obviously the ash can that comes out here and the debris gets taken away. The, as you can see over there with fans and pumps that's forcing air through. Um, Whatever the combustible material is, it says here biocombustible, so uh, <coughs> bio waste, you get burnt, and the heat is then transferred. This, uh, 
it's probably a furnace that it's heat air furnaces heat air and so then your waste is taken away you have your control valves up, control circuits up here all temperature and pressure uh, there's not much I can say about that the inspector will tell you whether these again whether these pumps and motors are working well this is obviously a hopper that feeds stuff in feeds the bio waste in and he'll just he'll give you a report on its BTU rating its efficiency rating how old it is just and <laughs> he may even tell you how much life it has left in it but that's not really part of your inspection report the next item on the list that we're going to be talking about is duct working um, the duct work you'll see in a lot of these you'll see them in stores where they have no suspended ceiling um, warehouses as you see you have a main plenum duct which is running down here there's a supply coming in here and the warm air is vented straight down this may seem inefficient but it actually does work very very well this whole area here will be filled with warm air um, we'll get more into ducting when we come on to the ventilation side of this because it's obviously mainly part of you know, how you move the air around the building because here it looks like you have a return air vent and it's over some machinery or something that tucks either heat or exhaust gases from a machine there's another one there that, that will take more air out of the building but these ducts I mean they can be very large um, you can cl climb inside some of them they're that big but your inspector will come up and he'll look to make sure that there's no holes in there there's no gases escaping uh, that the heat is that side there when you want to be blowing out that way make sure that these registers are not blocked and that they're not dented or damaged in any way again that'll be a photographic evidence if it is because that will be down to the maintenance company to replace you have your I say a main supply coming in there that's probably from an RTU with this size of pipe it's probably quite a reasonable size one but it's only feeding these registers it looks like it stops there I don't know for sure but it, it'll just be that RTU will feed this area here and keep this area warm so on the roof of this building there's probably six maybe four or five six any number of RTUs feeding different areas so you know it's, it's basically all you can look at as a duct is make sure that they're sealed properly that the register's not bent photographic evidence and your, your third party report will help make you complete a, a good report on that it looks good so you have electric heating um, in a lot of commercial properties this is the style of electric heating uh, it's called a dimplex heater you have a, a high resistance wire going through the current is passed through that um, it gets hot and then a fan circulates the air around it takes the heat from the resistance puts it into the air and circulates it out around the property this will be on a smaller property um, there may not be a gas supply there it, uh, there may it might just be the most efficient way to heat a smaller area or small workshops or something like that you just that you don't have to run any other pipes you just need a power supply and every building has a power supply so you when you come to inspect this you just make sure that the brackets are okay doesn't look like it's going to fall down here you can see there's some chips and the paintwork you can just say that you know take a picture and say this this has obviously been well used make sure that these little led lights work um, the red one will probably tell you whether it's in fault and the orange one will tell you when it's working correctly so just uh, again you can come up there you can turn them on turn them off electrically controlled so you'll get a good idea whether they're working that's, that's a fairly easy look at um, a lot of it you can have obviously much larger electric heaters but they tend to be not as efficient um, an efficient way of heating a building as maybe a, a boiler or a furnace here you have electric fan heaters these are the same sort of principle as that but these could be mounted on a wall um, so you have the same idea you have a control layer just fans comes on the high, the high resistance wire generates heat it heats the air and is pumped out so these could be up in an office uh, up in a wall just to circulate air around an office here you have the firing mechanism most boilers and furnaces will have some sort of firing mechanism um, I say apart from even apart from the solid fuel ones. here you have your gas valve regulator that comes to the ignition system here you have an electric control for the fan this will be sparked there'll be a small flame come out here 
and the main valve will be switched on and your main mix of air and gas or oil will come through this pipe. The small spark means that you can have a, or a small flame means that this fan can run and not blow that flame out and you don't get a big boom, a big bang if you try igniting a big flame in one go. So this is a, a type of firing system you'll see. Uh, it's probably going to be sealed in. You'll probably not be able to see much more than that. But your third party expert will be able to tell whether it's working well, whether the ignition is working properly, or whether the fan is generating enough air to mix properly. So you, if it doesn't mix properly, you'll get a smell of gas or you get a smell of oil coming out through the exhaust system. Hello, and again, the next time we have here is furnaces. Um, furnaces heat air. That's a boiler heats water or some liquid, mainly water. Furnaces heat air. They use a flame in there. In this one, you can see yellow piping, which indicates it's gas. Um, and you can see there's a, the, the, most furnaces in industrial complexes these days uh, use less to heat the building and more to heat or temper things that are made. It's a big system, takes a lot of energy. Um, you can, as you can see, this is just a huge furnace. It will take a lot of energy to heat anything in there. The amount of air that it will heat is phenomenal. But it looks like these are products that are going to go in there and get heat tempered. You have a, a, a duct here that draws some air up so that the heat doesn't, you know, you open the door once there, it doesn't come out and just knock you over. You have a, it's a completely sealed system you're not going to be able to do much of an inspection in that apart from open that door. Um, your, your third party expert will know what that furnace is used for. If it, a lot of them, they'll use the heat. If it's generating a lot of heat, yes, they will come part of the heating system. They'll heat air around the area. Why waste it? But uh, they'll be on a smaller scale if it's part of the heating system. These are huge. These are big walk-in furnaces. So may not see too many of them, but you have your valves here, the same as on the boilers. You'll have regulators. Um, <clears throat> there will be part of the, uh, the heating system that you'll inspect as a furnace. But it may not necessarily be this big. So. There's a furnace room. You see, this is much more like the type of furnace you'll come across. Smaller properties. There's a, there's a fan motor there. There's a vent uh, going out there. The flue taking out the exhaust. It has a valve there. This heats, I believe it heats water. Yeah, you've got a water system coming through there. Um, the, the air is generated. And then, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. You have an electrical control circuit there. These panels will come off, but you may not want to take them off. There's off a mess in there. Your third party inspector will decide whether they need to come off. He'll probably take the top up and look inside. Make sure that the flue isn't right away at the top. Make sure these connections are all good. Make sure the pipe works good and the supply of uh, the gas coming down here, or oil, whatever it is, is mixing well. Again, you'll, you get a, you'll get a strong smell of oil or gas if it's not mixing and burning properly. Um, it may come out through this valve here. So if you're in the room and you smell that, you know you're not getting a good burn. It's not working efficiently. Um, <laughs> ground source heat, basically it's a geothermal system. The, you're not likely to come across many of them, but it is growing at a rate of, a rate of about 10% a year that you're getting, uh, your ground source heat systems are growing. You'll have a borehole going down. The advantage of these systems are at certain levels, the, the temperature of the, the, the earth or the, wherever it's getting its heat from, it's maybe a water supply, is constant. You'll have a circulating pump. You have uh, heat pumps up here which generate, uh, the, which flow the heat around the building. You're not going to see too many of them. I mean, mainly residential have these now. Um, simply cost. Uh, it costs it costs a lot of money to dig down big enough, deep enough, sorry, to heat a large building. Um, but it's something that will come in the future with uh, the price of energy going up and up. This is something that's always there. You can go down a couple of miles. I mean. The Earth's 12,000 miles in diameter, so how far do you want to go down to generate heat? This is a heat exchanger. On this one, heat is, heated water is pumped through one side. These plates get hot. 
they generate the heat into the other side and it, <coughs> the heat is transferred into the water. The advantage of these systems is they can be close to the boiler. They don't need such a big boiler because the heat is generated in these plates. It's transferred to the water or whatever medium you're using. And then that's pumped around the building. These bolts are tensioned to a set tension to keep the, make sure the plate stays uh, constantly level. Otherwise the heat could buckle the plate. You have vents down here which will allow excess heat and pressure to escape. You'll see that they're bolted to the ground and the pipes are then bolted through here. And they run through. You could have two or three or four of them in a row. They're, they're, there's not a lot that can really go wrong with them. Again, you'll take pictures, your expert will tell you whether they're working well, whether they're working efficiently, how old they are. This style of one has a plate on there which will tell you the heat rating it needs to, to operate up correctly. So that's a, a newer style heat exchanger, I'll say, where the heat is exchanged through these steel plates. This is an older style heat exchanger that's found in, main, <coughs> in boilers. Um, and you can see that the water gets pumped around here. It gets hot. This is all, the whole area gets hot and the heat is transferred through these pipes into here. And it then comes out, it's pumped out through in one system and out through the other. You can see these flanges are joined up. This is under pressure so that these plates, this system will be bolted down pretty tight. Um, there'll be a gasket in here. Um, this is obviously an old one that's being moved around. But that's, so that, would be in, that size one would be in a large boiler. Sorry, a large, yeah, a large boiler or a large heat exchanger of some sort, a large air handling unit. It could be any, anything. But again, your third party inspector will tell you whether it's right, whether these are broken, whether there's going to be any leaks, and whether it's damaged in any way. Because that will be inside of a unit. Hydronic heating. Well, we referred to this before, boilers. Hydronic heating is a water heating system. As you can see here, these, these heat water. Um, they probably use gas and the water is, is pumped around through here. Normally these pipes would be insulated to maintain the heat in the water. On these arrows, you can see there's a flow. Um, your electronic control systems inside of these cabinets are all the controls. Um, this is obviously fairly new. You have a flue coming up here, which vents out there. All of these systems will join onto that flue and just vent out through one common fl uh, flue at the top. As you can see, the panels come out. Um, inside there, there'll be, there'll be your gas valves, your gas regulators, your control circuits. Um, again, it'll have all your, <coughs> sorry, your, your flow meters telling you the flow of the water, how much heat is being used how efficient they are. See, this one's bigger than these two. So this may be uh, the main body of the building and these might be ancillary rooms, part of the building. So it, again, it, it's a complex system, but it's up on these pads. So that if any of these water break, uh, water lines break or leak, these will stay above the water so that the systems inside don't get damaged. So uh, again, if there's electrical systems in there, you won't want water mixing with that. Your, your inspector will check these joints here, make sure these hangers are all secure. So again, it's a, a just mainly visual inspection. There's not much you can see inside these pipes, obviously. You can just make your inspector will tell you whether these are working properly. That's, you know, and that the, the joints are good and there's no visible leaks, no signs of water coming out. Um, <coughs> we talked about this in the definitions. There's a limit controller. This is a fan style heater. It's obviously mobile, it moves around, it plugs in, it's electrically controlled, but your limit controllers are these here. It'll control the flow of air, control the flow of the gas that's being used to burn them, make sure that it doesn't get too hot, because if this all gets too hot, it, it damages it badly. Um, you have a removable panels here, if you're unscrewed, it tells you, it gets you into the workings of it, and your third party man will tell you whether that's working well, plug it, they'll be able to plug it in and just briefly test the fan without a, <coughs> without a gas supply or oil supply to it. Wouldn't want it to run it too long if you could damage the ignition system. This is a panel heater without the rest of the panel on, and this basically explains what happens. You have high resistance heat uh, wire coming through here. 
you know, electrical current on here, and it obviously just gets hot because of the resistance. And the heat is transferred to that side of the panel or to this side of the panel, depending you know, on the wall how it's mounted. Um, there's another panel heater here. Basically, all you can do is check with these panel heaters. Is there, do they have an electrical supply? Do they feel warm when you touch them? You don't want them running too hot in case, in case um, something might object to you getting them very hot. But you just want to make sure they work. Are they scratched? Are they damaged? You as an inspector could look at these and make sure that they're okay. You may not need your third party man um, to tell you that that's working. But you will just need to make sure that there is a supply there. Um, you'll need to know where the breaker is to turn them off in case they overheat. But that's basically what you saw inside of there will be inside these, just high resistance with electrically controlled. There'll be a thermostat control somewhere. It may just be on the inside of that door there, or it'd be just out of reach there. The other form of heating is radiant heating. Um, radiant heating is just, as you can see, this water is flowing through this, these pipes on the floor. And it radiates its heat up through the floor. And as we know, warm air rises, so it heats the whole building from the ground up. Um, there are other types of radiant heating, but this is becoming very, very popular. It's a very efficient system of making, uh, generating heat into a room. The may have different zones. I mean, you may decide that there's a wall coming across here and it may be pumped into this side uh, through one zone and then that side through another zone. And there'll be, a, there'll be a zone control valve in the heating room where the heating is supplied. Your third party man will be able to tell you whether it's working or not. So it, this is just a basically a radiant tile heater. There's many, many different types of radiant style heater. That's one. Is another type of radiant heat. This is infrared heat. This is a low intensity infrared heat. It's on a, at a patio, on a restaurant or a club. Um, <clears throat> they're usually gas fired with an electrical spark that fires the gas. They're obviously called infrared because they glow red. You see them. The low intensity heat uh, for these infrared heaters, um, the idea is that they don't have to be mounted quite so high. Uh, the heat is pumped down to the floor, and it's transferred to whatever's there, whether it's you, the furniture, or the floor. The heat is transferred to you, and then you radiate heat, or the floor radiates heat. And it makes the atmosphere, it generally it generates heat that way through the whole area. So the low intensity, and that's the system how they work, is they just pump the heat down and allow it to heat everything else in the building, everything around it. <coughs> they don't, the the recommended height is around about 10 feet for them. This is a radiant tube heater. Again, it's an infrared style heater. You can see the tube coming as a, come through there. The heat, it is get very hot. These are high intensity heaters. It's fan, uh, sorry, there's a, a fan pumping the air through there. These glow red hot. They're called high intensity heaters. They, they, the heat is reflected down over a larger area. Um, you'll find them above doors in workshops. Um, I believe this is a, a garage of some sort. When the doors are constantly coming up and down, up and down, <coughs> to have a warm air system, the, the air will just get sucked out and the cold air replaces it straight away. These radiant type tube heaters, they blast the hot, air, hot heat sorry, down and they keep the area at a pretty good temperature even with the doors open. So they're normally gas fired, the gas comes through here. Your inspector will come up and make sure that this is okay. There's drawing air in from the outside. There's a vent fluid air. They're very efficient, but they do get very hot. Uh, if it's a uh, high intensity heater, it has to be at least 10 feet off the ground. That's the code for that. It must be a minimum of 10 feet, otherwise they could burn. They could burn your skin, burn you, burn anything. That's how much heat they actually give off. There's RTU. RTUs can blow hot or cold air, but for our purposes, these are heater ones. We saw in the direct fire and indirect fire system, you have your weather flu there, and inside there, there'll be a baffle. You'll have a filter. Um, it's probably on the other side, which is typical. <coughs> you'll have your electrical connection here and a disconnect there, so they can actually disconnect the power. 
The access to that will probably be, there's a panel there, and there'll be a panel around there for you can get to the electrical supply. <clears throat> One of the things you know about code for these things, if you, any vent, whether it's a plumbing vent or a heating vent that's coming up through the roof, must be at least 10 feet away from that unless it's higher than that intake. You can see these are vents here, they're venting straight down. They're okay, but this is the intake hood. Nothing can be vented within 10 feet of that. Um, as you see, they sit on these panels here. There's a, there's a hole in the roof which uh, will have some ductwork going straight down or venting out to the area. Obviously, under here, there's a reasonable chance it's different rooms or a large area. These are used because they, they, can, they don't cost a lot of money to run. They're pretty efficient and they can generate enough air to eat a large area pretty quickly. This is a space heater. Um, <coughs> space heaters, also unit heaters. Here we have a gas supply coming in. An electric ignition system. They're mounted on this old thread here. Uh, there's a fan inside, it burns the gas directly and it just blasts air out. They use these in warehouses, uh, <coughs> storage areas, because um, it gives out a lot of, lot of air pretty quickly um, and it spreads it out fairly efficiently. You don't want to use it in a store because somebody will stand underneath and get a blast of air if it's in a shop or a, um, a little pizza parlor. Someone to be standing there getting a lot of hot air blowing down on them. So in large open areas, that's where you'll find these. They're mounted on all thread like this or on the unistrut and then all thread down because they vibrate. And if they were fixed rigid to the ceiling, they'd vibrate themselves to pieces. Um, because you have a fan circulating in there. So that's just a good way of blowing air. Your inspector will check this. You'll check the connections here. You'll be able to look inside the back there. There'll be a, see the fan. Um, some of them have filters, not many. Check these connections here, make sure they're on. And you'll see this pipe coming down here. This is a conduit. It's probably running down to a thermostat or a control switch of some sort. Uh, that, again, you can be able to check that. This is steam heating. Obviously, again, steam heating is a boiler. This is a big boiler. It has a pump coming through here. There are two uh, areas here where the generate, <coughs> sorry, where the steam is flowing. You have these insulated pipes coming out. You have all this pipe work here, which is all for the controls of the, the boiler. Um, steam heating is basically just, it's hot water pumped around the system under immense pressure, which generates steam. And <coughs> the higher the, the air pressure, the more steam you get and the less heat it actually takes to generate that steam. Here's you have a big fan this is the heat coming through here and here. I don't know how many times you're going to come across a boiler this size, um, but you might. And it's, this is in a, being a large uh, industrial unit. You have large ductwork here coming across where it vents air through as well. Again, when we saw earlier that uh, air unit, which was hot water, there could be a uh, steam system it's a, it's a more efficient way of pumping heat around than hot water. So, because it's a, it's a lighter system, it takes a smaller pump um, and it maintains its heat for longer than just hot water does before it condensates back to water. Your inspector will come here, will know, we'll check these, all these bolts, the tensions on them, the, the torque. If you come across this, don't touch, get somebody else in. It's a very complex, very dangerous system if you get it wrong. If you vent the steam out, onto you or somewhere else, that's, that's serious burns. So get an expert in for these. Obviously, you can, any, vis, any immediately visible damage you can take a picture of and report. But as to whether it works or not, get somebody else. This is a unit heater. Um, like a space heater, this could be a standalone unit um, and it could heat a large warehouse. I got this off the manufacturer's website. Here you see a, a pump that pumps the air in. <coughs> this could burn uh, at uh, somewhere between 4 and 4.5 million BTUs. So there's a reasonable chance you'll see some ductwork up there and it'll vent it into a big building. This would be a big warehouse, big storage facility. You have these large fans here that draw air in. If you see this, this normally have a, a railing around that 
so to make sure that this can't get blocked or damaged and that the airflow is not inhibited in any way. Um, again, about the only thing you'll be able to do a visual inspection on is this part here. Your expert will be able to come in. There's probably a little panel on the front that you can look at. If here you see some control circuits down here, it's, you'll do your visual if there's any dents or damage or any holes in it that could cause you know, problems with leakage. Uh, your expert will be able to tell you whether this is all good. I say this is brand new, so it should be good. <coughs> but I say these, these are huge units. They draw a lot of power, a lot of air. So this hail has to be cleaned to make sure it's clean. Um, if you see a lot of dust or dirt inside it, it's not going to work efficiently. It may even be the dust and dirt is drawn in there and vented out into the heating system. That does nobody any good. So <coughs> just uh, you say your visible check here, you have controls, valves here. It's a, it's a simple system, but it's a powerful system, so it needs to make sure it's working pretty well. And that's the end. Um, again, we could go on so many different types of heaters. There's over-the-door heaters, blow air out. There's, there's a whole series we could do of about 12 videos just on all the different styles of heaters. All we've done here is give you a brief overview of what a heating system is about. So if you, if you come across something you're not sure about, ask. You can ask us, you can email us, we'll find out for you. Ask your third party expert, he'll give you all the information. The only time you're going to look stupid is when you try writing something down that you don't know. So don't be frightened to ask. Thank you for taking the time to watch this. My name's Dave Gaston.